Um, my name is Ladislav Slezák. I'm a member of the YAS team in Prague. And in this short talk, I will tell you about Docker as Travis, how we use it. And the goal of this presentation is to show you that uh, running uh, continuous in integration is not something difficult. You can use it in, even for small projects. And I will show you some, some tricks uh, we use in, in YAST. So the, the first question is why Travis? The obvious reason is because uh, it's a hosted project. It's uh, uh, it's free for open source project and it's nicely integrated uh, with GitHub. That means if your project is, uh, is hosted at GitHub, you can quite easily make uh, running your test as Travis. Just some examples. This is uh, the Yast repository at GitHub, and as you can see, the the visible part is this uh, this uh, green icon, which means the Travis build is passing. If if you click that icon, you will see details, and 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 you can see the the full log that means uh, what was uh, executed on on the runner which tests were uh, failing or not and at the end you will see success so that's one point and the other point of uh, github integration is uh, for example showing the git uh, the status for each commit uh, you have in your repository so if you look at uh, the branches there are, you will see for each branch a sign. With, if it's a green check mark, that uh, belt was okay and passed. If there's a red cross, that means that the belt failed and there is some issue with that. And of course, the same tags are used in pull requests. So whenever somebody opens a pull request with some change, you can immediately see whether this change passes uh, the continuous integration or not. So we can see for every commit here the, the status. Like the, the first one was not so great, so it failed, but then it, it, it was fixed. So right now we know that all checks have passed and we can, we can uh, match the code in, into the master and we know that it, will it, it won't break anything. It will still work the package will be still building. So let's talk uh, about some uh, details of the Travis build. Internally it builds, uh, the, the workers are running in Ubuntu virtual machines, uh, either precise or trusty, but uh, oh, oh, ball of, oh, both of them are pretty old. Uh, the, the precise is actually discontinued and not supported anymore. So the question is, what if you need a newer compiler, newer libraries, and what if you need completely different distribution because your software is not uh, meant to be run on Ubuntu? And another issue is that you can easily uh, debug the build because for example if if the build fails what to do you need to somehow check what was wrong and it would be nice to somehow see uh, either if remotely so you could for example SSH or you could uh, reproduce the issue locally but both uh, are not possible with service so why docker the Docker is uh, the, the, the obvious solution, which uh, should help you with the problems I just mentioned. Um, it's supported out of box at Travis. That means um, you don't need to install it, configure it, and anything like that. It's just ready, ready. You just issue the Docker commands and it works. Um, Another interesting or important feature, which which is nice, that it's container based and it's really lightweight. It means there's no no big overhead, because as I said, the the, the Travis machines already runs in a virtual machine. So having one layer, one uh, one more virtualization 
would would slow that down and that would not work nicely. So that's that's uh, advantage of Docker. Another advantage is that many base system images are available. So if you don't like uh, Ubuntu, you can easily download uh, Fedora, Debian, whatever. So you can easily, you can even easily build your or your own images at Docker Hub and use them for build. So that means you can enhance the base images and yeah, that that's make uh, the build much easier. I have prepared two examples. Um, first is Snapper. It was already mentioned in, in several talks here. I will just tell that uh, it's a tool for managing file system snapshots in written in C++ and it's meant to be portable. So it it's, should work in many distributions. And the package we built in OBS is actually targeted for the BN Ubuntu and so on. So this is the main feature here. And regarding to the source code, uh, it's in a single Git repository and the code is not changed much, much often. So this is the snapper repository and again, we have uh, this nice service badge. So um, the setup is that uh, every build runs in several uh, Docker or virtual images, but we run Docker, so in the end we, we can run each build in a different target uh, system. So we currently build like for five different distributions, that means every commit or pull request open to Snapper will be built against Tumbleweed, Leap, Fedora, Ubuntu, and Debian. And we know before merging the, this uh, pull request that all these distributions, that the package for all these distribution will still work. So how it's done? Uh, we have separated Docker files for each target distribution and specific script for that. And yeah, the Docker images are built at Travis in, in parallel. We define a build matrix and this build matrix allows running each, each build in a separate uh, virtual machine with a uh, different Docker image. So, we have this uh, main Travis YAML file, which uh, defines uh, the distributions. And, and uh, different Docker files for each, each, each build. So you define, you use these uh, Docker files. Like this one for Tumbleweed. We, we basically base on the, the, on the publicly available Tumbleweed image. And additionally, we run zipper and install the packages we need. Then the, 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 the main work is done by this Travis script. Again, for each target distribution, we have a separate one. So for example, for Tumbleweed, we run some, we build a package, at the end, we install it, 
and and run even on the supper, snapper minus minus version. That means we verify that the install package still works. So in this case, the Docker images are directly built at Travis. That means we, it's easier for us to maintain, but it takes some more time. But because the snapper is not ch not uh, change much time, much often it doesn't matter. The the second example is Yast, where it, which is uh, much more complicated because it's not portable. It it's uh, targeted just for open source or source distributions and has modular design. It means currently we have over 100 Git repositories, we have bigger development team, and there are more frequent changes. That means we need to somehow cope with the fact that the builds are much often started and we need to somehow make sure that they are faster. So to make it faster, we, we pre-built uh, Docker images at Docker Hub. So we have spe special special image designed for Ruby. We have second image, which is designed for C++, because mainly we have two groups of YAST packages. Either they are written in Ruby, or some of them are written in C++. And to have separate set of packages for each group, we have a separate uh, Docker image. And uh, this this Docker image image contains a common script which is uh, used uh, in all modules. That means, and um, at Travis we usually just call just one single script which handles all modules. That means the the script has to be a bit uh, flexible. Like not all modules support Rubocop, so we need to check whether the module uses it. Uh, whether the, the module uses make files or newer rake files. So some legacy modules are not converted to rake file yet, so we have to be uh, more flexible here. Uh, then we run the test and so on. So again, uh, build package and try installing it. And to ensure that the Docker image is always fresh because we built it against factory, and we need to ensure that uh, the factory changes are in, in the Docker image and that the Docker image contains the YAST packages, we have a simple, a simple Jenkins jobs which just triggers a rebuild of the, of the image at the uh, Docker hub. So every like uh, two, two hours, we tell Docker Hub uh, to rebuild the image, so we have fresh packages, and we are sure that we are running against the latest versions. So the the, the original setup was we built uh, Ubuntu packages, but that didn't work well because well, it was it was extra work. It was hard to maintain. And it was not much reliable because the the Ubuntu system has some 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 different uh, system defaults, or sometimes we forget to add new file into that uh, Ubuntu packages. So either we got false positives, or we missed some 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 bugs because, for example, we could not build uh, RPM packages in Ubuntu easily, so we skipped this. So if there was a bug in the spec file, uh, this old Ubuntu setup. Uh, could not found it. Uh, with the new setup, uh, we, as I said, we built uh, two Docker images, and the, the Travis script is shared, so so it's it's much uh, easier for maintenance. We don't need to care about uh, about the Ubuntu there. We just uh, run the tumbleweed Docker image image, and yeah, that's it. So uh, the summary is that now we had more reliable builds because we are building really in, in, in Tumbleweed, not, not in a, uh, Ubuntu or something else. Uh, it's much easier for to debug this because you can download the Docker image locally. You can run the same commands which are run in the, in the Docker image at Travis and you can see what's happening there and yeah, quite easily f find out what's, what's, what's wrong. 
And finally, we are not uh, dependent on the def default system at Travis because, for example, that Ubuntu 12.0 will be dropped soon, and we have to some something uh, we have to do something about it. Otherwise, our Travis will not work for us. So uh, we have to switch to something newer. And switching to newer Ubuntu is, is, uh, would not help much. So we decided to switch uh, to Docker, which, is, uh, which makes us independent on, on the Travis default. So, any questions? Yes. How do, how long does it usually take when you submit a pull request for all the tests to finish? Um, it depends on very depends on the package, but usually every package is built like in three five minutes because it depends how many tests are there, how how the how big the package is. If it's a simple simple just module which has just few files. Then it's a matter of yeah, say or, minutes. Or a snap, a snapper, for example, that should go quickly, right? Um, yeah, that's like in five minutes. Okay, thanks. Uh, yeah, as you can see, it's usually about five five minutes, but depends on, on the worker. So here it's almost eight, but usually it's about five. And as I said, uh, these 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 uh, belts are run in parallel. So actually, the 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 real time was much much smaller than than the uh, sum of this time. So usually, when uh, Travis is not loaded, all is uh, built in parallel. So in in five minutes, you get the results for five distributions. Okay. Any more questions? So I put some links, uh, which will be part of the of the slides, which I'll, I'll upload, or you can contact us at the Yast mailing list or IRC channel at Finu. Thank you.